OK, let's talk about these questions. Uh, I'm doing it like this because uh, last week I recorded it and I uploaded it to YouTube and the audio was terrible. The microphone has some problem, so I'm doing it like this. I'm sure you can all hear me. I'm a very loud person. Uh, so for the first question, uh, why did the film have to be animated? Group three mentioned that uh, using an animated film lets the filmmakers create so many special effects uh, that would be harder to do for a live action movie, even with lots of CGI. But even beyond the special effects, when we look at the quieter moments of the film, when family members are just talking to each other, they notice that in a film with real humans, you can't move that fast. The editing here is faster because we don't have to deal with the residue of being an imperfect human actor. You can design the characters exactly to say what you want to say and you can move on faster. Um, and I think that makes a lot of sense. What uh, one thing they didn't mention, but I think is also very important, is I think it would be really hard to find such a good dog actor. Question two, uh, is the film made for children? How would other age groups respond? Uh, group four mentioned that they think it's not exactly for children. And this is an interesting answer because the stereotype of an animated movie is that it's mainly for children. But I think we all know that's not always true. Group four thought that this film uh, had a better target audience in people of your age. Uh, college students, people who are about to go to college, people who could uh, empathize with Katie's situation that she's about to leave home. There's going to be a whole new stage of her life. And facing parents who are also anxious about their child leaving home for college. Um, and so another possible target audience, according to group four, is these parents. Whether uh, the viewer can identify more with Katie or more with her father, I, they believe that both kinds of viewers would appreciate this film the most. Maybe, according to group four, maybe if the viewer were younger, 13, 14, 15, they would in like uh, understand the technology part, but they wouldn't really understand the going to college part. Whereas maybe for even older viewers, uh, especially if they don't really know how to use technology, maybe they would uh, have the reverse situation. They would understand what it means to send a kid off to college, but they may not really understand all of this fuss about AI and technology. But of course, older people uh, can also be fluent in technology. Not every older person is fitting the stereotype of somebody who, like the father, has no idea how to use the internet. Um, so we also talked about what if you had even older viewers who were good with technology? How would they respond to the film? Um, and group four believed that maybe they wouldn't exactly understand every part of like the AI and the robots, but they would understand that uh, people in every age have different ways to express themselves, different kinds of technology. Uh, and so maybe they would still appreciate the film, but in a different way, uh, different from the target audience. Question three, did AI have to be part of the film? Group five said, not really. If you think about the story, it's family versus uh, like other kinds of activities. In the movie, it's using your phone, making movies, chatting with friends. But really, any kind of activity that does not involve your family could be the second half of the film. Uh, before the internet, maybe it would have been playing video games. Before video games, maybe it would have been uh, reading comics or reading like novels. So like AI is not exactly essential to the story. You could still tell this kind of story 
if AI was not part of it. Uh, so I asked group five, well, then why is AI part of this movie? If it's not that important, why is it here? Uh, and their answer is that because AI is the hottest new technology, everybody is talking about it, people expect AI to change the world in good ways and bad ways. So choosing AI as like the trendy topic um, maybe would make this movie more relatable to viewers. Like everybody is thinking about it, so the movie would be able to connect with viewers more directly. Um, yeah, and I think that makes sense. It's a movie that is about issues that we're facing today. Question four, why is Katie a filmmaker instead of something else? Or why is she an artist in the first place? Um, well, group six um, mentioned that it's probably because the people who made the film are also filmmakers. Uh, and you know, when you are an artist who reaches this level and you're able to make big budget animated movies, then this art form has probably been part of your life for a long time. It's not like these people learned how to make movies yesterday, right? So filmmaking must have been an important part of their life. So when they wanted to tell a story about the importance of family and the importance of um, not being afraid of technology, um, maybe like the the experience that they have led them to make Katie a filmmaker because that's the kind of story that they are most familiar with. That's the kind of story they feel like they can tell the best. Uh, and another possible answer coming from group six is that films, videos are really a part of our lives today, right? Everybody watches uh videos on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, whatever. So uh, it, it's uh, a more direct connection between the character and the audience. You can imagine, right? If Katie were a painter, the film would feel very different because first you have to think about what does it mean to be a painter? But because Katie is making movies at home on her phone using everyday cameras, it feels like something that we could all do if we wanted to. And so her story makes more sense to us. And at the end, when her work becomes important to the story, that also makes more sense to us. We can think about the films that we've seen that made us laugh and uh, made us realize how talented people can be. Right? If, if, I, if at the end of the film was uh, Katie's paintings changed the world, then we have to think about, OK, what is a painting that has changed the world before? Uh, we wouldn't connect so directly. Question five, what is the film saying about being weird? Uh, group one, taking the second half of the question, group one actually disagrees with the film. They think that the Mitchells are not actually that weird. They're just like a normal family. The reason that they are called weird, according to group one, is because what we see on the internet and social media is chosen to look more perfect than is average. Whether it's people who only upload the perfect photo, the perfect video, or whether it is the algorithm choosing content that looks more perfect to show to us. Uh, what we see online is more perfect than average. So in fact, according to group one, the Mitchells are just a regular family. Uh, and so we can think about the idea that there is no such thing as a perfect person, perfect family, that we're all kind of weird. Uh, and group one noticed that the film is connecting the idea of being weird with the idea of being authentic, always being yourself. Uh, but they then mentioned that always being yourself is not always the best thing to do. When you go to a job interview, you don't want to be yourself, right? You want to present yourself as a perfect employee. Um, and so why does the film only show the good part of being authentically yourself? Maybe because it's not, uh, the, the message of the film is not 
uh, presented alone. It is presented to people, real people in real life who already have your own values and your own thinking. And so maybe its target audience is people who are already too worried about not being perfect. And so for these, for this kind of viewer, the film is like trying to reassure you, it's okay not to be perfect, right? These people, everybody calls them weird, but they're okay. Um, so it's not like a complete comprehensive message. It's a message to a specific kind of viewer in a specific culture. And in fact, every film, every work of art is like that. There is no such thing as the empty viewer or the empty reader. Every viewer, every reader already has something that they believe, uh, and the work of art has to engage with that. They can't. The work of art cannot pretend that this does not exist. And then finally, question six: the film, do, according to group two, the film does seem to be saying some new things about masculinity. Uh, the main character is a girl, but she does a lot of things that we would expect boys to do. Although maybe this is because she is the main character and main characters uh, often do these things. But that also shows you the importance of, of putting different people in the position of the main character. Uh, another way the film changes our ideas of masculinity is by showing the manly father struggling to uh, come up with ways to fix the situation, struggling with technology, and uh, willingly giving up his ideal of living out in nature to raise his family and his children. Uh, and that's not what we expect from a traditional man, right? We expect, in, uh, traditionally, men have been in charge in making the decisions, uh, but in this film, it's only, according to group two, it's only when the father follows other people that the situation is resolved. Okay, questions or further thoughts about this film? Okay, next week, holiday, don't come to class. After that, we're going to watch a long movie and we won't have time for discussion. So the discussion will happen the following week and after we're finished, discussion, uh, finish, finished discussing, I will introduce the midterm exam. Okay, have fun.